The following text is a transcript and summary of a downloadable audio file found on a website that was said to be available to the public for the course of three days. Before being taken down by an unknown cause, any trace of the site has been removed entirely. This has naturally led to extreme doubt and near-instant dismal. At first, the site simply never existed. However, upon hearing the file's content, the possibility of a missing person was raised, as well as certain other curiosities. The file is an MP3 that contains an audio recording featuring almost 26 minutes of narration by an individual apparently named Chris Lawrence. This very nature of what he speaks of throughout this recording seems extremely detached from reality, as if he's experiencing intense hallucinations. Topics mentioned are regarding one Sonic.exe, including a detailed description about how it inflicts damage or some kind of influence on certain individuals' minds. Yet, with the exception of one particular section regarding a statement about the deaths of several people, the narrator seems almost completely calm and collected. There are no signs of psychotic breakdowns or any kind of high stress level in his voice. The exemption mentioned involves the narrator becoming angry on the subject of fan-made creations being both responsible for people's deaths as well as falling victims themselves. Throughout the recording, we can hear several ambient noises of disturbing nature, suspected of being placed in order to mask the location of the individuals. These sounds are very convincing, mixed in to give the impression that they are moving around in the distance. Authorities have currently ceased any and all investigation into this matter, as it is now officially considered to be a cold case, with too many uncertainties and no solid evidence. One other file was received along with the MP3. A PDF that was at first believed to be corrupted, until an analysis showed that it was encrypted images and needed to be rearranged somehow. Only just over 65% of it was corrupt beyond recovery. After putting together what was salvageable, the result was bizarrely fragmented images containing what is to believe the narrator himself, along with several of his personal details, both are largely obscured due to the corrupt sections that after assembly clearly spelt the words, I'm listening, presented in caps with a pixelated miniature of crimson, black, blue, and red. What can be made of the individual's details includes the majority of his name, along with 11 stray letters of various details such as addresses, date of birth, and occupation. The other noteworthy detail of these stray letters is that they spell the words stop killing and are also placed in the right order. Littered throughout the overlaying sentence, the occurrence with whatever managed to corrupt the image was unsuccessful in covering those specific areas. The individual appears to be of average height and build, stands straight with long blonde hair just past shoulder length. His face cannot be seen due to that part of the image being corrupted. He is wearing what looks to be nothing more than a simple set of jeans and a midnight blue shirt underneath a black hooded top, carrying what is questionably a set of firearms, consisting of what can be recognized as a Desert Eagle on the right hip, a Glock 17 on the left, and both a Remington 870 pump-action shotgun and XM-8 assault rifle on his back. Each firearm has a strange visual effect of being covered in some sort of dense, swirling fog. The fog itself is a mixture of gray, black, purple, and teal, and is wrapped tightly around the shape of the firearms. Strangely, though, no holsters are presented for this equipment. Also, are two other unidentified items attached to the outer side of both of his legs. Whether these are weapons or not is uncertain, as there's too much of the image obscured to tell. Very little else can be seen about this image, other than what can be made out as a background behind him. It suggests scenery that was very visually altered in several ways, resulting in series of twisted and disturbing shapes that are colored with a blur of black, mauve, and various shades of blue share no similarity to any scenery currently known in this world. Certain factors such as the date of upload, details of any location allegedly involved, as well as both the names and other content will not be included to prevent investigations of any further outside source. 
The recording begins with a sound that resembles an audio jack being plugged into an unstable or defective socket of some kind, before switching to an ambience of what has to resemble both howling and cries of pain that upon first impression have been tweaked with audio software and is at a lower volume. After approximately 30 seconds, there is the voice of a male estimated to be in his mid to late 20s. My name is Chris Lawrence, and I have a warning for anyone who now is hearing this. Whether you like horror or not, you'd best hear this. You need to know. And if you're involved with what has now caused more damage than you could imagine, well, that means fanfics, artwork, and constant attention to something that was never meant to be messed around with. You, you have a lot to answer for. And you have just... You just love playing around with these concepts like all other popular things turned into memes that you feel you can just take in order to help it grow for your own sick little amusement. No point in going there until you know what I'm, why I'm here, what I'm talking about. I never imagined doing something like this. I don't know, a podcast, whatever you want to call this thing. I don't want anything other than some of your time. If that's okay with you pieces of the picture I'm here to tell you about are pretty big within themselves. But hopefully, you'll see it's it's all bad. In the end, I just want you to listen more than anything. I'd best get to the point, right, before I confuse you any further. You could say that this all began when I was checking some stuff on YouTube one night. I was watching some top ten video on creepy moments in games, and after seeing this one game in particular, I got curious. I say curious, but I'm pretty sure at this point I was actually controlled on some level. I'm sure that. That's how it works. Guess you could say I have my own reasons for regretting the day I heard the name Sonic.exe. Or anything about it for that matter. Even then, I don't actually think regret would be my word of choice. So, if anyone just stopped listening, fine. Maybe it's nice to stay ignorant. That is, until they might come across my kind of problems. But to anyone who's still here, you want to hear what I have to say? If you really want to know about this, and you just understand or even believe that I'm trying to stop what follows in this thing's wake for real, well, you, can, you can stay the hell away from it. There's a lot to wrap your head around, I don't know. Even where to begin. I guess carrying on about how I first exposed myself or got exposed would be a good start. So I mentioned a list of creepy stuff in games. And this had me interested. I had a couple of things about what it was, but how some research followed. Research usually leads to something with a download link. But like I said, this was more than just fascination. It was being compelled without knowing it. The more I think of it, the more I'm certain I was being called to since I first saw him. All that aside for a second, I succeeded in getting the game and went through it. The version I got was just a replication of the original, though. Extra stuff in it, and most importantly, it wasn't the actual thing. Now, if by chance you hadn't seen what this thing is, it's basically the first Sonic game. It was done by Wes Craven on an especially bad day. I gotta say, as freaky as it must be for most people that don't have a stomach for horror, and maybe even a few that do, I couldn't go unexplored forever. Violence is everywhere you look, and all that, am I right? Seeing the characters after they were caught is just what I remember most clearly. That and the face at the end. But there were a couple of details that were a little off what I saw in any vid. It's easy to say there's something about the eyes, but in this case, there really was something about the eyes. Pupils. They were darker than I saw before, and that wasn't my monitor. But they really, the really weird part was when I, when I must have looked away for about a second, and then back again. And this time they were really bright. It made his eyes look bigger. Yeah, see, there was, there was one other thing to mention. 
you know, feeling or fear. It was only interest. I obviously thought nothing of it back then, but now that I've had time to look back on all those points where I should have been afraid, it's amazing how much of an effect it has and how much attention you don't pay. I felt I just had to find out anything else that I could about it. I wanted to find the original version. I didn't even know why. I do now, of course, but at the time, like I said, totally oblivious. But there was something in that moment that definitely signified things really starting. Shortly after that, Steam told me that someone named Gamma had added me as a friend. Curiosity got the better of me, of course. I opened the chat to say hi. But without anything saying that they were typing, they said hi first. This person knew my name. I did feel a bit weird by that. I mean, I... It could have been someone I already knew who found me on here, but I just played through that game. I already had a far-fetched idea going through my head. I asked them how they knew me, and the response was, well, it was a little strange at the least. At the most, it was just detached and insane. This person started going on about how I caught his attention, and how they wanted to take me back to the beginning. It stopped soon after that, but I had the life scared out of me by laughter coming through my headphones. It was, it was loud. It made me smack him off my head. And yeah, it was the same laughter I heard in the game. I checked to see if it was still up. Nothing was there. And something came up in the chat and caught my eye. The words Gamma is now deceased. Yeah. You did just hear that from me. It, it was. It might be that I hadn't paid much attention, but I'm pretty sure Steam doesn't show that one. Oh, it gets better, though. It switched to Gamma is now mine. And the link came up, just saying the beginning. I didn't click on it, but my PC started downloading the game anyway. It wouldn't cancel. Kinda makes me wonder what the point of the link was, if it just did that, yeah. Anyway, it was done in a few seconds. And got put on the desktop in even less time, and then, except for the chat window and a brand new desktop icon, nothing. I, I would have believed this was someone who's good with coding and able to play a not-so-funny joke on me, but after everything else. You know what I was thinking? And you're probably thinking, too. Well, we both got proven right very quickly. The screen went dead, and I heard something like scratching, and slice marks started etching themselves into the screen. No. Not a vid or anything, I mean actual scratches. My monitor was being ripped up in front of me. The screen was getting twisted up where it was cut. It was buckling and curling outwards, and underneath was something that looked like living tissue. There were words appearing, but I also heard something over the sound of the screen being destroyed, and it was coming from my headphones. Like a genius, I grabbed them and I listened. It was, it was like several screams at once. Only they were really distorted, quiet at first, but clearly getting louder. As more of it appeared, it was like... I was hearing stuff from somewhere really nasty. I heard that laughter again, a, a lot louder than before. Pretty much deafening, actually. Only this time it didn't come from the PC. It was more like something behind me. And then complete silence. When it stopped, the words were in all caps. Saying, I'm listening. My brain had a hard time with all of it at first. I dropped the headphones, I checked outside the door. Only to see nothing was there. Not only that, but when I looked back at my monitor, <laughs> nothing. No scratches. Just a blank screen. Now, this is what got me thinking about that whole control thing to begin with. And I still wouldn't know if it, if it wasn't pointed out to me. I doubted my own sanity, but only for a few moments. 
After that, I didn't have any problems with going near the PC, even after what I just, I just witnessed. There was no fear towards it. But no curiosity this time. Didn't seem important back then, of course, but I should probably mention it now. Anyway, the PC was still running. And the monitor was just fine. The first thing I did was check Steam. No one named Gamma or anything, saying I ever met them. Except for the new game that I had. But aside from that, everything looked normal again. I do remember that I have a new icon, though. Just, just those eyes with the blood trickling down underneath them. Quite a sharp resolution, too. I kept thinking on and off that I just... Imagined all of it. And no one else in the house was kicking my door off its hinges because of the noise. But believe me, it felt so real. In the end, I was unsure. Maybe then I stopped thinking about that because a very strange feeling started creeping up on me. It was like... I wanted to sleep. Not because I was tired. It was more like a sense of just... Not wanting to be awake anymore. No kind of depression or anything, but I, I just didn't feel like me. I just fell asleep like it didn't happen. It shouldn't have. I was shown the events of the game again, and it was almost exactly the same. One thing was changed. The look. There was almost nothing cartoony about it. Everything looked so grim and real. Imagine someone putting all these characters in places through Photoshop or something, and then making them just a bit off from a human's height. Seeing them from that perspective for the first time, you've seen them in games. But in the flesh, as it were, the eyes were still almost as big, so you might have found it a bit creepy. Some probably wouldn't even care because it's Sonic, but I cared. I wanted to stop it, but I couldn't on account of being locked in a room, being made to watch it through a window. I never did get shown what he did to those poor guys. I only heard screams and the static. I, sh I should have pointed out they weren't screams that you get in the game. They were, they were fitting for each character. What I did after all of that, though, was, was that freak busting through the window after he was done, growling something about suffering being part of who I am. Can't remember the exact words, although the words I do remember was him yelling at me to wake up. I did just that in one hell of a hurry. Didn't even get much sleep. Because I was sitting on the edge of my bed, I could have sworn I was still dreaming when I saw what was on my monitor, but I wasn't, unfortunately. It looked like a video clip of the freak. But he looked as real as he was in the dream. His eyes were completely fixed on me. Also, seeing as you know who I'm talking about, let's go with a pet name like Freakazoid. I'd come up with something demeaning for him later. You don't really have a clue who or what he is, but you know what he looks like. And you may think you know what he does, but you don't. You really don't. It was a dark background, so I could barely see anything other than him, but I could just just about make out something like a crimson sky, and there was some kind of shapes dancing and twisting around in the distance. There was something... It was alive. After a few seconds, I realized this wasn't a video clip, no, no loop. Freakazoid was actually staring at me with a, the toned-down smile on his face. That feeling hit me again, only this time it was more like needing to do just one more thing before you go to sleep. You know, the, like five more minutes on a game or one more video to watch. I actually felt I needed to get to him. No trace of common sense at all. The desktop came up by itself. But the background was still the same thing. Until he started looking at the game. The screen went a bit strange after that, giving a split second of red static here and there. The mouse cursor flew about all over the screen as well. It stopped with the cursor being right next to the icon. My hand just went to the headphones. And then the keyboard and the mouse. I clicked on it. 
It was just like before, without the updated look, the, the music scenery murders, the words, the characters, and the way that they got locked out when they died. It was just one small detail you might want to know about. My hands were stuck to the keyboard and mouse, and no, I don't mean I needed to keep my hands on them, I meant I tried to remove them, and it was like everything was stuck to the desk. Except that I was able to slide the mouse around. I played through the end, seeing the same ending. Three rounds of static, followed by that laughing. And then there was another round of static. The picture stayed the same. But now it said, What are you? Yet another round of static, and... Right, okay, I don't know... This is going to work. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm, I'm going to do it. Audio undergoes a second of strange interference before cutting to approximately half a second of static. The transition is followed by what can be heard as wind blowing, as if the recording was made on an outside environment. This consistently remains for the rest of the segment. Four seconds in is the voice of a male with slightly diluted American accent. The male's voice would appear to be a heavily modified voiceover, including a substantial low tone from a pitch shifter. However, there's no sign of tampering of any kind throughout except for the beginning and end of this segment. Visible or otherwise. Having fun? I hope so. I hope you enjoyed watching. All those sealed fates. You knew what was going to happen to them and you just watched. Although you did more than just watch, didn't you? You took control of them, led them to me, gave them up. You are responsible for their deaths as I am, Chris. There's something about you, something I can see. I wish to take a closer look at you. Let's talk in private, shall we? The audio cuts back with the same transition described at the beginning of this current segment. Okay, what you hopefully just heard, that was his voice. What he said to me. I know, I know, it doesn't really add up that I'd have that to show you. <laughs> but I did just show you, I hope. What happened after that, well, all I really remember is the screen flashing and hurting my eyes. But he was moving with every second of it. The last thing I remember was a shot of his whole body standing straight with his arms stretched out in front and he had the, that same look on his face from before. Then everything, I mean, I mean everything, my actual vision went completely red and then to black. Next thing I knew, I woke up. Well, let's just say somewhere else. I can't tell you because I don't know. Quite a few things have happened since then, my own adventures through this, but I've already delved on for what must have been a half an hour now. Besides, there's another important part that you need to hear. I don't know how long has passed since I first got into whatever this is, but the things I've seen... I don't know what this place is. If it's, if it's just a dream, or if I'm hallucinating, and I, in reality I'm strapped down to a bed in a mental hospital or something, or indeed, if this is some kind of place beyond your imagination or your nightmares. I know it sounds completely insane, what I'm saying, but I don't know what else to say. I would try to explain how things work and the sights you get here, but I don't think I have the words to describe it. I could tell you something that I've seen, though. Bodies. And... A lot of brutality and murder. There's been characters, either from games or, or, I'm guessing, made by any of you since I don't recognize any of them. They get chased down before they just disappear until he's done with them. And then there's, there's a human victim that he chooses. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Real people here. These people went through the same thing as me. Only they weren't so lucky. They don't, they don't have what I've got. They weren't saved and, and given a chance to even survive, much less fight back, and it's your fault. Yeah, you. You keep conjuring up these little pieces of fiction artwork and, and further proof of existence. It's because of you that a place like this exists, all these characters that you just keep creating. They, they get about five minutes of life in this hellhole before their remains 
as well as the people that he chose to drag in here, just, just left for me and others to find, and you continue to just bury us in this, and if you say, oh, but I played it and nothing happened, then you found out that you're lacking. Not worth his attention. Why do you have to give him the, the reign of terror that he has? Why can't you just draw him getting his face kicked in for a change? Why didn't you just, just, give, uh, just give us a break already? You have to stop indulging this thing's power. Believe me, once again, I know it's completely insane what I'm saying and the little evidence I have of words and an apparent recording that I'm not even sure that you got to hear isn't much to go on. I should imagine that you've even questioned how I got that. Well, I just have it. That's all I've got for you. But you've listened to this point, and there, there must be some, some part of you that's convinced whatever all this started off as, it must have grown, it's evolved, it's refined itself, even though you wouldn't know from looking at this place. Either that or it's always been here. It just needed something to give it a shape. I don't know, something I, I'm sure of is also the reason I'm doing this, and it's, it's that I'm here to tell you, you have to stop feeding him. If not for our sake or the sake of anyone else, and for your own, I can't say what he looks for when he goes after someone. He's just picky, leaving so many alone, yet there will always be those people that spark his interest. If you believe me, then I'll make you a deal. If you leave this thing alone, then we'll fight this in peace and stop it from spreading. He can't be killed, but he can be subdued. And if you don't believe me, but you're still listening, just think about it. That's all I ask. I'm not asking you to spread the word or stop making any of these characters. I'm not saying destroy what there is to already see. You can't destroy it. There'll always be a copy of this stuff somewhere in the world. And even then, I doubt that he'll let this place end in such a way. After being here for as long as I have, I feel that... Even these characters that you've given life to in some way or another have the right to exist. And you people don't deserve to die. Would you agree? Just stop giving this creature the power that it keeps using on us. Leave this one alone. He is extremely dangerous and just might choose you next. I'm literally the only living human being I've come across here. So what the hell would your chances be? The only reason I've survived here is because something wanted us here, and because we're probably just as much of a freak as he is in some way. I know what I ask is a lot. Maybe it's even impossible. It's just a fact. There's a part of you all that's hardwired to respond to violence. You may take offense to that, but it's the truth. Think about it. So many of you see what all these forms of media have given you. You play games to feel strong, you watch films to escape yourselves. And when you see the news, you say, oh my, how tragic. You keep on watching, just as long as it isn't happening to you. That's not some sick psycho you've been keeping locked up, that's just human nature, ever since the start. I think the reason that I've survived might be because I try to stop the horror rather than watching it from behind a monitor or TV. I've survived and I'm still fighting back and even though this is a dark, brutal place where no one was meant to live. There's still some life here. There's a lot of enemies, but there's, there's also allies. Make whatever judgment you see fit about. I've told you, it's, it's not like it should matter to anyone. This is some kind of home for to that Sonic.exe. And we are the anti-Sonic. We'll continue to be a thorn in that fucker's side until our last breath. You've been warned, so if you're still stupid enough to put yourself in this much danger, then it's your own breath. The following segment is mostly inaudible due to unexpected interference mixed with distorted screams that resides for approximately four seconds. The sound clip that's been cut and rearranged. What follows is patches of static that continue until the end of the recording. One or two other notable points is the sudden presence of two distinct different voices. This is the most explained for the transition between tenses I and we. 
The second voice is that of a male with an American accent. Sound point is that what appears to be distorted cries, making their ways from the distance to what assumed to be the narrator's location, as well as the low presence of deep-toned male laughter. The voice has a resemblance of that of the individual heard in the earlier segments. Static continues, with what can be heard as several yet unidentified creatures following by what it is believed to be gunfire from at least two different sources. Accompanied by shouting from the narrators, along with three extra voices, the first two are American accents, belonging to both a female and male. The third is another British male. There are also sounds implying further use of tools that cause projectiles of some kind and lethal force with high impact. Whether those tools are weapons cannot be determined, although it is likely. All mention of factors take place over approximately the last eight seconds. A struggle takes place between the narrator and what is believed to be one of the apparent creatures from which the cries originate from. The gunfire continues, almost remaining consistent throughout. The recording ends with the sound of the opening description, only it is now more like the jack being removed. Based on the loose assumption that this is not a mere hoax, it is unknown whether or not the person or persons responsible for this file's upload survived the incident. The file has been all but dismissed as a hoax due to the lack of concrete evidence, including such elements as the sound clips from it in already existing forms of media. Also noted is that there is or never has been anyone by the name of Chris Lawrence, or any individual having his personal details held under missing persons. Neither has there been anyone having taken up residence or even connected to anywhere near the area of alleged disappearance. To prove this further, locals in the areas connected claim have never heard of such a person. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. I hope you enjoyed tonight's story, and thank you all for listening. Please help support the channel at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and make sure to tune in for new horror stories every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night. Many of the horror authors that I've worked with throughout this channel have all come together to work on one big book series, The Creepypasta Collections, Volume 1 and 2. Check them out on Amazon or at any local bookstore near you. Thanks for listening, kids, and sweet dreams.